<clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I'm proud to be a co-founder of this foundation along with Erica Mann and Ellie Ploy, and as a governor also of the foundation today. My thanks, if other governors don't do that, are very warmly felt to Pila, who steers us through uh, the various kind of obstacles which we have to face, to Maria Rosa, who organized this in the survey, thank you very much, and the staff of the foundation, and also to Ajit, who uh, runs this Policy Bloggers Network, which is indeed a fascinating outreach into the outside world, so we're not just considered to be a Brussels Beltway organization. But my principal thanks obviously goes to uh, Nelly Kroos, and Nelly, thank you very much for coming and being with us this evening amongst the dinosaurs, but with a forward-looking message. I have three questions which I'd like to put uh, to liven a little bit the debate because I think you raised a number of fundamental questions. The first is, uh, if there's anything about this era which we know for the last decade or so since the foundation has been in existence, it's about the empowerment of the individual, where the individual has become much more accessible to information, things are much more fluid, much more transparent, but there lacks a principle called universal access where every European, every human being should, in my view, have the right to access of proper broadband and mobile services. I'd be interested to see how we could actually make progress with that particular principle, because that then underpins everything that we're doing, as you say, to make every European digitally aware. Secondly, as a European principle, uh, it seems to me that having seen, I'm now on my fifth financial perspective since 1988, that we deal with proposals when we're about to decide them, which will be next year, which were framed some two, three years ago. And the question comes, as was raised by Laszlo Andor in this house two, three weeks ago, how can ICT now begin to be shown in the funds, the social funds, but also, of course, in the regional structural funds? It may be a question which is a difficult one, but maybe the Commission should come forward with a revised proposal on its financial perspectives, which allow the digitalization of the structural funds to allow huge areas of funding to be available to local communities, which doesn't just go into areas which are traditional, but areas which are now, as we all know, able to generate the jobs and growth of the future that we need. More fundamentally, and this is my last point, is that uh, as we're dealing with uh, technologies which change super fast, ultra fast, I'm not quite sure what the term is going to be after ultra fast and when you go to the next generation, but here we are set with targets which are set for three, four years ago, something when the commission came in and that was all prepared with a digital agenda, which of course I warmly welcome, but outside in the globe, the targets have changed significantly in South Korea, in Asia, elsewhere. Household speeds are kind of traditional at 100 Mbps. I asked myself the question, and you uh, indirectly referred to that, why should we be satisfied with a second-rate target which was made four years ago? Shouldn't the Commission come forward now and say, look, the whole game has changed. We now need as a basic speed 100 Mbps by 2020, not just in commercial premises, but actually for every individual. That would shake an awful lot of people because it has consequences not only in the policies but also in the funding, which is where I then would come in. So thank you very much indeed, Nelly, for being with us, and thank you all very much for being here.